What's up guys? We're at the landfill again today. We've got an absolutely gorgeous day in front of us. We got a lot to do, but I was riding by our uh, coffee dump location and Rolando's on the Komatsu D68 pushing, so I stopped and thought I'd stop. We'd just take a quick look, see what he's doing. We've got so much coffee grounds that's coming in every day. It's just unbelievable. Maybe in a minute we'll ride around and show you the other mountain that we've got. We started to move it around here to dump it so we could use it on the side slopes of the landfill. So the actual landfill is up there beyond my truck. We'll ride up there in a minute, take a look. We've uh, got a new dump area that they're prepping right now, so we'll go take a look at that. But we wanted to get this coffee kind of closer to the actual landfill so we wouldn't have to haul it as far. But look at all these beautiful coffee grounds. Stuff smells amazing. This brown stuff you see right here is the chaff. Real lightweight material, but this is kind of like the skin that's on the coffee bean itself. And then the black stuff is the actual coffee grounds after they brew it and uh, make, make the coffee. We try to use as much coffee as possible in our composting process just to use it up. It's uh, got some nitrogen to it, but it ma it's mainly a carbon source for us, but it makes a wonderful uh, addition to our fertilizer that we mix in the compost. kind of see the steam coming off of it it'll naturally break down and compost on its own and turn into a nice um, humus material but we're just going to stockpile it here and we're going to use it on, on the side slopes of the landfill so we can help vegetation get established For those of y'all asking about recycling here, we recycle as much as we can. Uh, we recycle about 20% of the material that comes in. Up in this area is kind of my little pack rat area. These are sections of pipe that are still usable. We'll use those all over the property. And then I, I couldn't throw away these huge uh, pots over here. They look like nursery pots. They were used to hold some kind of pelletized plastic at some point, but they're crazy thick and uh i was going to use them to actually grow some trees in one day but you know my project list just keeps getting longer and longer and just aren't enough hours in the day got a lot of pvc pipe and pex pipe that we've able to to salvage and uh some metal stairs over there y'all would be absolutely amazed at what we waste as humans especially here in america and um we try to like i said we recycle 20 percent of the material and we were trying to recycle more, but the, the volume of trash that just comes in is incredible. We're up to probably around 600 tons a day of waste and trying to sort through that in a timely manner is just, it's, it's impossible. So what we want to try to encourage people to do is to pre-sort the material out in the field. That way when it gets to us, it's already segregated and we can process it easily. There it is. So we just got another load of what we thought was coffee grounds in, but this is gonna be the chaff stuff we looked at a while ago, and it is dusty. Great day. It likes us, man. <laughs> All right, we're waiting a couple minutes here. The, chaff, the wind's so bad today, and the chaff won't quit falling out on its own, making it hard for us to get over there and open, open the door. Let me swing it around to you. Uh, yeah, just watch your eyes because more is going to fall. There it goes. 
And there comes some more. We got to back up again. It like, likes us, folks. It's chasing us out of here. Nothing bad to it. Again, it's just an organic material, but it's just dusty as all get out. I think we'll go ahead and walk over here on the hill a little bit because when he dumps that out, it's really going to go everywhere. And hopefully we're upwind enough. We'll find out here in just a second if we are. All right, here we go. We're about to find out if we're far enough away. We kind of got the road blocked a little bit, so we got to hurry up and get this truck dumped out and get him on out of here. Orlando's going to go over there and direct traffic for a minute. Don't really like this spot for dumping because it's so close to the haul road, but we don't really have any other options right now. Raise that box on up some more, buddy. There you go. There we go, that ought to help get her out. We'll walk just a little bit further upwind. The wind's trying to trying to change directions on us. That stuff's so lightweight, he can easily just back up into it. As long as it doesn't get too thick, then it gets stuck. But I think it's gonna be just fine. Just gotta keep rocking it back and forth. And of course, the wind's gonna change direction now. You get all over us. All right, we're gonna go on up to the landfill. This is gonna take a little while, evidently, for him to figure out how to get all that chaff out of there. So let's go up and see what's happening in the landfill. All right, we made it up here on the very top of the landfill. You can kind of see behind me. That's where we're dumping right now. That's our what we call our working face. So that's where the trucks are actively dumping. But what we got to do here soon, because it's getting pretty tight down there there's not a lot of room you can see for the trucks to turn around so in order to fill in that valley where the guys are right now Rolando went ahead and brought some clay up here and capped this top area here so we can bring the traffic up pull them up that way back them right up to the edge and then we're going to push down into this valley in order to fill it up and then we've got to figure out where we're going to go next we've got the open cell down in the bottom but I think I want to get a little bit more material, uh, more sand out of there before we start taking waste. You can see Gringo over there. That's our mulch and compost yard. Uh, we're going to go around there and talk with Aaron in a little bit, see how things are going for him today. And then in the very distance, I don't know if y'all can see it, but right there is the sand washing plant. So uh, that's where all the sand is processed for the concrete sand. And this whole site just kind of ties yeah you know each one helps the other the compost we use in the landfill the sand is a byproduct so we got to process it and get it out of the way and then down in the very bottom too is where we crush the concrete as well as make our retaining wall blocks let's see if we can make our way down to the active working face and see what kind of waste we got coming in today and just see what's happening all right we just had a little meeting with the compactor operator just doing a little planning for future field sequence, where we're gonna put trash next and that type of stuff. But while we're here, for all you guys that love to see the compactor run, we'll film him a little bit and just see what kind of trash we got coming in today. And just while we're standing here up by my truck, that's where we're gonna start dumping soon because you can see how tight it is down here and you get five or six trucks in here, which we often do, it gets a little bit hairy. Looks like he's got some just regular old construction material, a lot of cardboard, a lot of stuff that could be recycled, but this kind of goes back to what I was telling you guys earlier. When you got 600 tons and 120 to 150 trucks a day coming in, it's just really hard to make any real good effort at recycling.
and something else really cool that I'm excited to show you guys and to see myself either tomorrow or Monday of next week. We've got a Caterpillar D6 dozer coming in that has the trash package. So it's gonna be armor plated, fire suppression, the whole nine yards. So that's gonna help out operations down here a lot too. We'll be able to skim the floor behind me that we're walking on right now, keep it a lot cleaner, and then push that waste up to the compactor so that he can then compact it in. That's gonna be a huge game changer and I'm really excited. So as soon as that thing gets here, you'll, you'll be the, one of the first people to see it, trust me. But especially when we got little trucks and trailers like this coming in, we just simply don't have the room down here. So I'll be happy when we move up to jumping on the top here in the next few days. We've got David over here on our Hyundai excavator. This is the one that has the magnet attached to it. So he'll go and sort through the material and pull out all the metals. And uh, he also can help like he just did there with scratching out. He'll put that traco up inside the container if any of the waste gets hung up. He can help them get it unstuck. Y'all can see what I mean about it being tight. You get a couple trucks down here, it gets busy real quick. Compactor operator's got to be on his game to get the floor clean, get the trash pushed up, and get it compacted. And then you can see we put some clay up on top yesterday. That's uh, for two reasons, really. One, for you know fire risk. Okay, sorry, I had to let that truck pass by. So we put the clay up top for fire risk as well as wind-blown litter. It keeps stuff from blowing all over the place. Y'all might be able to see I-20 borders our landfill and we don't need stuff blowing towards I-20. So that's the reason we put that clay up top there. We're gonna go check on our buddy Aaron over at Gringo now and see what's going on over there. It's a busy day today. We got trucks pouring in, lined up left and right. So let's go over here check on the mulch operation and see what's happening all right guys we're moving around the property finally made it over here to the mulch yard we got debtor check our loader operator back there he kind of runs the gringo site for us over here on the yard he's loading up a truck right now i want to show you guys this cool tip out bucket that we put on our hyundai 960 this thing has made a world of difference for us here in this operation uh, as you can imagine, we go through some mulch, and especially when loading tractor trailers, that big tip-out bucket, I believe that's an eight-yard bucket. It makes it very, very, or much easier to load the trucks because those tractor trailers will park right here. They're pretty tall, so that bucket goes up, and then it has the ability to tip what I'll, I'll show you right now. If he uses it, he's loading a small trailer, so I'm not sure that he will or not. But We load mulch out here and compost every day all day especially during springtime it gets quite busy there you go you can see that bucket just kind of tips out that's a work bra i believe is how you say it work brow something like that but it has been uh, a game changer for us around here at the mulch yard for sure something else that makes life a lot easier around here too is that quick connect on this other hyundai we've got twin hyundai 960s out here but this one with the quick connect, like you can see, he just dropped those forks off. Then he'll just go grab that bucket, lock it, and he's on his way to load another truck. Simple as that. <laughs> Daddy Check was just telling me pretty much everybody laid out on him today. We either got him sick or going to dentist or doctor appointment. So he's uh, having to hustle today. So that's why the MC266, She's not running today, making any mulch, but it looks like probably got Brandon over here on the big B66 grinding up some tree waste. Let's walk over there and take a look and see what's happening with that. So it looks like a few loads have been brought in this morning of green waste. What we'll do is we'll stage this green waste over here in this area. And then when we have time, we'll bring the grinder around and grind it all up and it'll either go into the mulch production or compost depending on what the composition is of the material the logs and all normally will go into mulch production that's what he's doing now grinding up these logs and they'll take that material more than likely 
and run it through the B, the uh, MC266 over there and color it either red or brown or black and then it'll be ready for sale. Then our edge trommel here, we use it to screen compost or if we get some material like this right here is probably a good example. You can see how the fines and sawdust coming off, that absorbs a lot of the color and it causes us to use more of it, which makes it more expensive. So what we'll do is take that stuff, run it through the trommel screen, screen out all the fines so that we're left with just chips, therefore using less dye and making a prettier mulch material. Brandon's gonna come over here and make himself a little bit more room. Just take the Cabelco and push the stockpile and make him a bigger stockpile so it doesn't, you don't want it to get up too tall and rub on the belt. And if we be real careful, maybe we can get over here and take a look at a log getting ground up. was on our way around to the wash plant y'all and figured we stop in here say hey to mr sam he's in the komatsu 360 today loading eric and our new volvo a30 so uh this is where we're gonna start mine well we've already begun mining obviously this sand's going around to the wash plant which you might can see right up above the horizon there so they can process it and turn it into concrete sand You can kind of see what Sam's trying to do here. If you see that color variation right there in the bottom of this cut, getting into some, what we would call overburden. And that's got a lot of organic material in it, which we do not want because organics and concrete aren't good. So he's gonna stay right above that layer and we'll just rip this cut right on back there. And then what we'll do, he'll hop over to where the truck is and we'll clean the bottom up, put the truck down there. Anytime you can keep that truck below you, it makes the swing rate faster and you can load your truck a lot quicker and move dirt more efficiently. But this is just kind of way you got to do it when you're making the first cut. All right, let's get around there to the wash plant because time's kind of slipping away on us here. I'm not sure if Aaron's running the plant today. Well, we're about to ride around there and find out. Well, we beat the truck around here, but we didn't come but just a quarter of a mile from where Sam's digging at right now to where Mr. Eric's going to back up and dump this load out. You can see A.A. Ron over there on the John Deere 844K. He's just cleaning up the floor a little bit today, and then he's going to take the sand that we're bringing over and run it through the plant to create our car C33 concrete sand. I like this new truck. I tell y'all what, man, this thing is sweet. She's a smooth running truck, super strong. One of the best purchases we've made in a while. We're definitely gonna get our use out of it. We're bringing sand around here to the sand plant as well as taking cover material to the landfill. That's one fine machine right there. So boys better take care of it or else. And we'll walk around here real quick. The battery's about to die on the GoPro, so hopefully it doesn't cut off on me, but you can see Aaron up there tipping out into the hopper, and then we're gonna take a look at the plant real quick, make sure everything's running smooth on it. 
and so we don't get run over we'll go ahead and just wait wait right here because that would be a pretty bad day get ran over by that big girl I love this little KPI plant right here. When we first built it, I thought this thing was a monstrosity until we were able to acquire the atomic sand mine and the size of that screening plant over there is about six or more times greater than what this little guy is. But smooth running little plant, never gives us any trouble. All electric, just quiet. You can see right here, we're screening out the rock and the clay balls out of the sand. They'll come around here uh, daily or as needed and clean out this vat. I'm gonna try to show you guys this plant real quick before the battery dies. Here's what we're washing out of the sand. You see all the silts and clays. The uh, material comes in the top up here. You know where Aaron just was down there at that hopper goes up the conveyor onto the screen deck two screens here this is an inch over three eighths gets all the clay and pebbles out and then the sand of course stays behind goes up the twin screw and then heads to the stockpile and dries for a day and then it's ready to be loaded out well guys before the gopro dies on me i'm gonna go ahead and tell you guys thank you very much for watching drop me a comment below let me know what you want to see more of, and I'll do my best to put it out there. Hit that like and subscribe down there for me if you don't mind. And we'll see you guys on the next video. I hope you have a great day.